This is number 236 in La Barbiera. No se llora. No crying allowed in the barber shop. I apologize for my bad pronunciation. Uh, the artist is Pepon Osorio. He is uh, from the US, uh, of Puerto Rican descent. We'll talk about that in just a moment. This is done in 1994. It was a mixed media installation. Um, it had its original uh, home actually in the Bronx, which is where uh, Osorio grew up. Uh, and he may still live there. Um, but uh, it had, a, and I'll show you uh, the original place where it was. It's an installation, um, so it can actually go other places as well. And so it has been to museums, although the original place was actually pretty much cooler than a museum. Okay, so um, here's some other, well, let's go back to the other one. All right, so what do you see? Uh, you know, you see, if you can't tell, that is a barber chair. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here, right? We have on the wall uh, uh, means forgive me, right? And some roses with um, bullets attached. So something you might see on a tattoo, maybe, right? Um, more of the installation. Uh, this is going to be uh, Saint Sebastian. Uh, anytime you see a saint full of arrows, that's Saint Sebastian, right? Lots of fake flowers, uh, you know, big mannequin with a quinceanera dress. Uh, um, this is a heart, a fake heart, obviously, but covered up, kind of made to look almost like a pinata. I don't actually know how large that piece is, but there's a lot of stuff uh, in this installation. Uh, if there's ever a, a mixed media installation that we've had, this is the mixiest of mixed media installations that we've seen in our in our pieces. Um, so, what is all of this stuff about? Uh, it's well, um, Pepe Osorio says this is his quote. He says, "In no crying allowed in the barber shop. It's not so much about beauty, but the contradictions of beauty. It's an installation that you're allowed to come into so that you're surrounded by its seduction." But it's also about the contradiction of male and female, the balance that uh, that it exists that it the, sorry I think it's just be, exists the balance that exists within the male and the female in all of us. It's contradictory because when you come in, you expect to see a joy celebration, but you also see a lot of men crying in the presence of a general public. Uh, he means uh, he's referring to uh, up here. There are, you'll notice a lot of uh, video or, or television sets in the installation and they picture men crying which of course is not a manly thing to do at all right and so uh kind of questioning uh you know stereotypically manly uh questioning what does it mean to be masculine right uh you'll notice the puerto rican flag down here as well i mentioned that his background was at puerto rican uh and we have new york yankees caps if you don't know this the Yankee Stadium is in the Bronx. Um, okay, so that's the re that was the original place. So it was actually in the Bronx. In a, I can't say that it was actually a, a barber shop originally, but an, an abandoned storefront in the Bronx. And so he painted it, uh, the, the outside, and uh, the installation was inside. And so the people of the community were allowed, you know, invited to come in and uh, kind of question, you know, okay, so what does it mean to be a man? Or, you know, men aren't supposed to cry, men are supposed to be tough, but then we have all these. Uh, images of men crying, right? The barbershop, of course, is kind of a a meeting place, right? Uh, where, where men can go and, you know, talk about manly things, right? And and But maybe at the same time, bring their guard down a little bit, right? Um, so I mentioned he's Puerto Rican background. He actually trained as a sociologist. He uh, worked as a uh, social worker in the Bronx for quite a while. Um, and his work is inspired by his, or his, his artwork is inspired by his work as a, as a social worker in terms of what he encountered, um, specifically American Latino culture, more specifically Puerto Rican culture. Um, we call this, uh, one, one thing that you can call this uh, is New Yorkian, right? So New Yorkian is a term that's applied to uh, people from New York of Puerto Rican descent. Uh, so New Yorkian, right? Um, there's a very important uh, cafe uh, called the New Yorkian Cafe where a lot of uh, poetry gets read, but that's 
a side note. Um, so obviously it's a big installation meant for a local audience, as I said, it was initially done in the Bronx, um, but it has also been exhibited um, exhibited in uh, mainstream cultural institutions in, in um, uh, museums, right? Um, so what do we see here? Street life, cultural classes, rites of passage. Uh, one way you can describe this is New Yorkian Baroque. Um, moving on, so packed with masculine symbols throughout, car seats, sports paraphernalia, depictions of sperm, uh, a boy's circumcision, yikes, phallic symbols and action figures. So challenging masculinity, challenging the idea of machismo in Latin communities in particular. Uh, I mentioned the video installation of the of the men crying, but all uh, in um, stereotypically masculine poses, right? Uh, and then some of the other videos that are there uh, show the public reacting with both sympathy and disgust to the crying men. Um, trucherias, uh, it's a Spanish word for trinkets or knickknacks. It's kind of the stuff that you saw, like stuff that you might see in a dollar store, right? All the fake flowers and the little dolls and things like that. Um, so known as kitsch, right? Uh, mass produced um, objects. Uh, admired for, maybe uh, ironically admired for, maybe the, the questionable taste level. But then there's a question of taste. Taste, you know, if you talk about, well, that's that's bad taste, that's good taste, That that's all tied up in social class as well, right? What's high, high, high taste and low taste, or high brow and low brow, and that is wrapped up in what, often, in what socioeconomic class you come from. Um, so, uh, here he, there's a there's a line between cultural celebration of, 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 of in particular, uh, Latin cultures in America, and then also possibly social critique, definitely social. Uh, so we have a video here. I watch the first. I don't know if the first five minutes is right. We'll have to see. Oh, wait, I'll have to do this separately because I forgot to turn on the volume. Hold on. Apologies for the delay. Hopefully this will work. obviously as well it's hard to explain to people what I'm trying to do as an artist because I do not fit the artist description and I'm always doing everything so subvertive and like always differently my work deals a lot with contradiction I, I embrace contradiction Contradiction can coexist with beauty, can coexist with anger, can coexist with a different emotion, the human body. In no crying aloud in the barber shop. It's about recreating my memory. When I was five years old, my father took me to get my first haircut right around the neighborhood. Oh wait, I just realized what was something. meant to that saint was not Sebastian. That was um, Lazarus, not the Lazarus raised from the dead, but the Lazarus with the sores. Um, from the New Testament. I apologize about that. I just assumed those were um, arrow wounds. They were not. They were sores. So to be a celebration became a disastrous event. This barber, he was not used to deal with kinky hair, or curly hair. I was crying a lot. I was scared. 
I was um, traumatized by the sound of the hair clipping. There was a combination of race, a rite of, of, of passage into, into becoming a little man. And I think that they both came together simultaneously. No crying allowed in the barber shop deals with the issue of machismo, but as a whole. And as a whole, it connects to the universe somehow. The piece pays homage to my father, a man of African descent. I often feel that as people of African descent, we were completely displaced from, from the community that we come from, which is, which is a contradiction, but it makes sense in Puerto Rican reality. When he was about eight or nine years old, I noticed that he painted the ceiling of the house, of his room. It was beautiful, you know, it looked beautiful. So later on, I got happy. <laughs> he always said, everything, he wanted always to, to... He was doing all kinds of articles, like uh, like houses, trucks, mm -hmm. cars, and everything, yes. you know, in wood. And we enjoy seeing him working because I want him to make at least to have a trick. <laughs> Coming from a working class family, being an artist is not an option. It's more of a challenge uh, than anything else. Okay. It just so we'll cannot remember ever saying, oh. I'm going to be an artist. Yeah. It was not a possibility. It was not an alternative. There's a piece called Scene of the Crime, which is Anyway, all right, so that is No Crying Aloud in the Barbershop.